Welcome back to Adventures with Rosie and welcome to a bit of a chaotic start here today. Uh, Rosie is going in for servicing first thing this morning. Um, we're a bit pressed for time so I'm going to let past Bronson explain the issues to you. Well thanks Bronson from the future. Looks like you guys are having a bit of a busy morning over there. Um, the reasons for taking Rosie into Alliance RV today are twofold. The primary one though is the diesel heater. Um, so our main means of heating uh, Rosie is our diesel heater, Sparcher 2.2 kilowatt heater. Really great heater, um, quite quiet, fuel efficient when it works. Um, and yeah, it, it's been problematic in the last year. When it works, it's awesome. Um, basically, if you cast your minds all the way back to the first episode, uh, when we took this caravan out, uh, the heater, I don't know if it was installed funny, but the fuel line from the heater came from the front of the caravan and it went around the exhaust pipe and into the heater. So we went away for the first night, it was pretty cold, we turned it on and it melted through the um, through the fuel line and was just dripping fuel on the ground. So I had a bit of a crash course in the middle of the night on how these heaters work and um, air echoes and that sort of thing. Then about four or five months after that we noticed that the pitch, it worked flawlessly, but we noticed the pitch of the fan changed. Um, it got louder almost sounds like it's got an electrical buzz to it like it's got a bearing issue I'm not sure um, but we kind of just put up with it and then about a month ago we were staying at Chelsea's parents farm and um, when I went and packed up the caravan in the morning I noticed some black soot on the grass um, so obviously wasn't burning correctly perhaps no error codes on the screen it still worked over the few days we were there just was a bit of black soot and now that we're here, um, and the last few nights, it's just been blowing smoke. And cold air out the inside, smoke out the outside, and so we haven't been touching it. Turned it off, didn't use it. And that's our primary reason for um, for taking it in. Kind of a bit of a shame because we've only had it a year, had a handful of issues in a year. Um, uh, but they do have a warranty, I think, for four years. So it could be something warranty related, but we'll, I guess we'll find out today. The other reason is the washing machine in Rosie. So when we ordered the caravan, we paid extra and got the Sphere 3.3 kg washing machine installed. Uh, being a family of five, we thought it'd be quite good. Um, and we went to use it one night and we figured out kind of the main problem with it. We actually did a review um, of the washing machine, which I'll put up here somewhere, but um, it kind of, we broke down each of the cycles and how much water it uses. The main problem for us is that a full load in that washing machine uses, I think from memory, 78 liters of fresh water. And then obviously puts out 78 liters of gray water. So fine, I guess if we were in America and we're at a campsite with full hookups, right? Fresh water coming in, gray water going out, fine. Um, but we don't tend to stay at campgrounds and our campgrounds here don't have that hookup. So it just fills our tank. <laughs> We've got, um, 160, 180 liters of fresh water and 90 liters of gray water. So if we do one load of laundry, we're down to half our water and our gray tanks full. Um, and it only runs on 240 volts. So they are great little machines. The couple of times we used it, it, it was handy. Um, but I guess our plan is to stay off grid next year, stay at dock camps, ends and MCA parks, places that don't have 240 volt power. Uh, I'm not going to get a generator or something just to run the washing machine. So we're going to get that pulled out as well. That's going to just become more storage for us. Probably going to put all our washing in there, make some sort of um, hanging our big washing baskets inside there that we can throw all our clothes in and then pull them out, you know, something on hooks or something and pull them out and take them to the laundry mat. So back to you, Bronson, in the future. Um, about time you got the caravan ready, I think. Thanks past Bronson for that great explanation. So um, the caravan is going in for two days of servicing. We're currently in uh, Mount Monganui. Um, stayed at the campground here in the last video if you didn't see that. Um, so we've got a little cabin on site we're going to stay in tonight. It does mean we kind of need to put everything in the car that we need for the next 48 hours. So we're busy packing everything we need to stay in the cabin for the night. Um, we're going to empty the tanks, tidy this place up get everyone in the car and then hopefully drop it off around about nine o'clock. So it's gonna be a fun little morning.
Well, the caravan is all dropped off. Um, Alliance will be sorting that out and then giving us a call hopefully today or tomorrow about the extent of that heater. They're not sure if it's going to take a couple of days to fix or how long. Um, yeah, until they, I guess until they get it apart, right, and have a look inside. What are you doing? Patting your head. So we are caravanless <laughs> for the next few days. Um, we've got a little uh, cabin here at the same campground we're at. Um, so we stayed just over there and we've just got a cabin up the hill now. So we're hoping it'll just be the one night and then uh, picking the caravan up tomorrow because I have work on Wednesday. Today's Monday. Um, so yeah, we won't know till later on today though. Hopefully this is the last of our sort of repairs and servicing and that sort of thing with the caravan as well because it's a bit of an effort obviously for us to leave Taupo, drive all the way to Tauranga, drop the caravan off, find accommodation, blah blah blah. <laughs> but I guess it's part of owning a caravan, right? Um, so yeah, little cabin for the night. Just going to hang out this afternoon. We are going to check out some op shops, uh, I guess thrift stores for American viewers. Um, you know, second hand stores. We like to try and check out a few in the areas we go to to find like kids toys because kids get so sick of their toys after a while. And also books. Um, Chelsea and Harvey right now are finishing off a Famous Five book. Harvey's been big into the Famous Five so I dug up some of my old books from when I was you know, a teenager I guess. And uh, he's been reading them with Chelsea which is quite cool. So we're going to chill out for a bit and then I think we'll head into town and head up a few op shops. I'm just saying well now. I'm hi, I'm Harvey. I'm just saying well now. This is our friend. That's the tail. That's my butt. That's not a book, and that's the one there on the sea pan. That's the table, and that's the stuff we need. And where are Mummy and Daddy going to sleep? And this bedroom. This bedroom, you know what I'm saying. And where are you going to sleep? You show I'm us. I'm sleep in the top bed. I'm going to sleep, I sleep up. Yeah. Do you? How do you get up there? With this letter on the letter. Say, watch my Patch! Well, successful afternoon in the second hand shops. What did we find, Harvey? We found two, two famous five for my, for my, no, for my famous five dads. Harvey and he used to be a little kid. And we found new ones and some, and two up shops. Yeah, we found three book, three or four books we bought, totaling about $4. Winner, winner. Um, one cool thing actually I didn't show you at the some of those NZMCA parks we've been staying at is they have like a free book library so you drop off like an old paperback and pick one up which is kind of cool so um, I've been picking up just random books from uh, those parks when we stay there and dropping off random ones when we go back but pretty stoked we found some more famous five ones for the collection yep. Well, we had a pretty chill afternoon. We just stayed in our little cabin and read some books. Uh, looks like we're going to pick the caravan up um, tomorrow morning, which is quite nice. So I'll explain more about what's going on with that heater tomorrow. Um, yeah, we just hung out, read some books and um, yeah, had some dinner, just chilled out, which was quite nice. Um, this weather is like being kind of on and off rainy, cold, windy. Um, kind of funny because before we left, um, it was like the whole week leading up to this weekend was like really hot and summery and uh, Harvey got sunburnt one day it was that hot and uh, the girls played out under the hose and the sprinkler and that sort of thing so we thought oh yeah hopefully it'll be like that when we're at the Mount Monganui you know and at the beach but uh, hasn't been like that at all but we'll make the most of it eh? because I guess that's part of being out and about in this sort of lifestyle isn't it that uh, you're not always going to get perfect weather um, so we've rugged up now Harvey and I are going to run around before he goes to bed 
see if we can get rid of that last 10 percent of his energy and um explore the campground a bit it's kind of cleared out a lot here because uh, school holidays is finished this is the monday after school holidays now monday night so um yeah nice and quiet i've lost harvey so i'm gonna go and find him All right, we got Rosie back. Um, guys at Alliance addressed both issues, which is great. Um, when they said they would, awesome, thanks guys, because uh, I got work tomorrow, so we're gonna start making our way back over to Topol. So we'll start with the easy one, the washing machine. Uh, here it is down here, it's been taken out. It's just gonna ride there on the way home. Um, it looks like they just uh, cap the pipes off, take the bench top off, um, pull the washing machine out, put the bench top back on and reseal it and everything like that. You know, re-silicon around the edge. The space this has created is really cool. Um, Chelsea came up with a really neat idea of making some cloth laundry bags that hang, kind of have like loops on the corner. And um, what we're gonna do is kind of have a, a, a big laundry bag in there that we, is kind of suspended so it keeps shape. And what we'll do is take it out, pop it over your shoulder like a Santa sack when it's full and carry it down to the laundry instead of a physical trying to find a plastic basket that fits that gap basically so Chelsea's going to get sewing on that when we get home which is pretty choice we'll show you that in another video now the heater it wasn't a warranty issue it was uh the way we've been using it issue apparently so the guys pulled it out um and it was absolutely caked full of junk like black soot here's some of the photos they sent through of just like all the stuff that was inside all over their workshop floor which surprised me for a year's use you know um so essentially not a warranty issue just a service they did a service on it um you know a few hours labor to get it out cleaned out get it back in because you have to take the whole unit out and there's a few parts and accessories a few um filters and gaskets that get replaced um what they basically said to me was how do you use the heater and the way we use it is we turn it on and we set the temperature like 17 18 degrees and we leave it running and it can tick over for days especially in the colder weather here in new zealand and um, just kind of tick over and keep the place warm now what they basically said is that's similar to driving your diesel vehicle around town and idling for ages and then when you take it out on the open road and you floor it you get a bunch of black soot out the back because suddenly the engine is working harder and hotter and it's kind of burning everything off on there so what they basically said is the way they tell their customers to run it and the way they've told me to run it is when you first turn the heater on, crank the heat up. So set it to like 24 degrees, 25 or whatever. Bring the heat up real quick in the caravan and that'll burn off any sort of residue and crap that's in there or help to anyway. And then dial it back to your idling and basically repeat that. And so the idea behind that is that you keep kind of running it hard and hot and burning off that excess crap. Um, not just running it constantly idling and not you know giving it enough heat to burn that off so we'll give that a go um i suppose check back in in a year remind me if i forget and i'll give you an update of what it's like a year from now i was surprised at the amount of crap that came out of it uh i'd like to know your experience as well how do you guys run them and and have you found similar things with the servicing I was just a bit surprised, I suppose, because we haven't lived in this full time this year. We will next year, but you know, this year we've been away probably every second weekend and um, to see it that gunked up was a bit of a surprise, but it's all back in, it's all running and uh, yeah, a few hours labor. I was hoping it'd be a warranty issue because then it would have been free. I suppose I got a four year warranty, but no, nope, we'll have to pay for this one. <laughs> um, so yeah, oh, well, these things happen, I guess, part of owning a caravan. Well, thank you for watching. Um, we got a few more videos in the pipeline. Harvey and I are doing some retrofitting to our external grey tank to make that compliant. And uh, we've got a few other things, a few other trips planned before Christmas. So if you'd love to come on the adventure, hit that subscribe button below. We are six weeks away from going uh, full time, which is pretty exciting, but pretty daunting at the same time. So um, we're going to head south and just show you all the best bits of the South Island and New Zealand 
looks so gorgeous down there so um yeah if you want to come along for those adventures um starting in the new year then uh, yeah subscribe below and as always if you've got any questions queries comments anything like that fire them away or message us and we'll do our best to answer them have a good one see you in the next video